Hello there guys and girls, welcome back to race number 2 of my F1 2012 career mode with Marusha and we are off to Malaysia. Practice was pretty much of a washout, so it was just a good time to get my wet weather set up. My, so to start with, just changing the front wing angle to 6 and rear wing angle to 4. Brakes are 50-50 and medium. The front anti-roll bar 6, same with the rear. My front ride height, well all the ride heights and the spring stiffnesses were all set down to 1. My gearbox is all in kilometres, so it's 130, 155, 185, 219, 250, 276, and gear 7 right the way down to 299. The front camber is set up right the way up to the left, same as the rear, and front and right toe. So, on to qualifying, which was sunny as it can be. And there you see my objective finish 18th or above, which in Arusha is nigh on impossible. So obviously just having to load my setup that I got off of racedepartment.com. And out to track. Obviously I had done some laps before this, but they weren't terrific, so obviously trying to get up the grid. See my best time there, 143 is about to go down. And now starting my fastest lap. So going down the main straight in 7th gear, rev limiter, break all the way down to 2nd for this never-ending first corner. A little bit of throttle between turns 1 and 2. And on the exit, full throttle with the DRS open. All the way around this long, long, long right hander. Up into seventh for braking zone at 100 meters. Down into second. And power on as soon as you can. This left hander is pretty much full throttle. Then this one after down two gears into fourth. Accelerate up again into sixth gear. Just after the 50 meter board, break down into fourth. Miss that apex horrendously there. Accelerate on the way out. Down to the left hand hairpin. Break at 100 meters. Down into second. Power on again as soon as possible. This corner I had problems with all week. I'm trying to record this. It's down into third gear for that. And through sixth gear on that. Not quite full throttle. And this corner as well. You'll see me in the race missing this apex and the braking zone by differing amounts each lap. I just could not get it dialed in. Accelerating down the back straight. There's one problem I have to say on this track is that the brake boards are on the inside of the track when you're on the outside turning into a left-hander. So it's really hard to see where you're braking and get the braking zone right. And there my steering wheel glitched and it wouldn't let me change up quick enough. So there you see me with a 1 minute 40.8 which unfortunately was only good enough for 21st. So, obviously not be making my target, and actually being beaten by my teammate by, looks like about four tenths. Obviously, failing the objective, and also being beaten by the teammate, not a happy camper. Telling my engineer that I got the wrong setup on because I was planning for the race. Now this is interesting. You can see down on the weather map that Sunday is supposed to be heavy rain, the same as Friday. And I don't know exactly what happened, but as you can see, nice and sunny. And obviously with F1 2012 now having Park Ferme in effect, I can't change my setup. So I'm actually running a dry race with a wet setup. Yeah, I suppose I could have checked the weather on this page here to see that there was no chance of rain at all. But I generally thought that what you get told by your engineer is what happens. 
I suppose that's Codemaster's new dynamic weather in effect. So this is just the running order. Just scrolling down to where I was. And as you can see, number 24, Felipe Massa. Somehow he got disqualified in qualifying. I don't know how, it was never shown or explained to me. Let's just change the setup, start on the primes, then go to options to finish off strongly. And changing my fuel to normal, which as you saw in the last video, meant I had to do a little bit of fuel conservation. And then it's off the track. All complete, we're ready. Hamilton on pole. Followed up by Alonso. There's my teammate just in front of me. And there's Felipe Massa right the way in the back. Five lights. Go! Bit of a wheel spinny start from me there. And also, every time I start going into third gear, I don't know if it's the gearing or it's how I do my start, but after I get into third gear, everybody starts catching me and pulling away from me, and I'm just left in no man's land. Little bump center there, and another little bump with Maldonado because he decides to cut across me and brake at the same time. Not a bad turns one and two, up from 21st to 10th. But it looks like Duresta trying to go around me outside. And diving up the inside again on everybody. Look at that. Turn four, P6. Can't really complain about that at all. Now it's just a case of trying to keep the Red Bull weather behind me. Going left, right, just trying to get past me, it's not working. I'm trying to catch up to Button, and I think that's Raikkonen in front of him. Where we're getting very close to my rear end there. So, obviously, as I'm recording this, a little bit of a slide there, the Formula 1 season is officially over as Weber tries to have a look, could have made it, but backed out, because he's a bit of a pussy. Yeah, the Formula 1 season is over, with a terrific race in Brazil to finish off the season with. When I first saw Vettel going backwards at Turn 4, first lap, I was like, yes, championship over, Alonso's won it. But just as in Abu Dhabi, he showed that he can go from back of the grid to right up near the front within a couple of laps. Yeah, I suppose there was the safety car that put him up there, and Schumacher gets past me on the main straight. But all in all, I think that final race really capped off the season well. And I guess congratulations to Vettel for being the third person to get three consecutive world championships, just behind Schumacher and the great uh, Juan Manuel Fangio. Uh, the other race I missed was the first ever American Grand Prix in Austin. And that race was exciting for a lot of ways. Obviously, Lewis passing Sebastian down on, off to that long straight, with a little bit of help from Carthy Kane, who's been a thorn in the side, it seems, of Sebastian Vettel all season. If anyone remembers the Malaysia race, where he gave Vettel a puncture and Vettel decided to call him a cucumber in German. But there was also all of the side-by-side -side racing that was going on, especially, or well, notably between uh, Jensen Button and Kimi Raikkonen, again, coming off of that long straight into the tight left-hand hairpin almost. And Button with DRS open, just screams down past him, but then under braking, Raikkonen just pulls it back and they go round that next little left, right, right, left complex, completely side by side, only with probably like three or four inches between them. It's proper wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing that I think everyone wants to see, but it's only a select few drivers who can do it, 
<coughs> Maldonado. Getting told to use DRS when I'm in P6 in a Marusha. It's never going to work. Because I can't catch anyone. And every time they blow past me, it's always not down that straight, so I can't use it. Although there are a couple of times in this race where I do get a bit of a DRS toe going down the main straight. Uh, I feel really sorry for Alonso after Brazil, because he struggled with a car that was not good enough all year. Won three races with it, and was three points off the title. Because Vettel, well, I guess it's because Grosjean had his massive brain fart in Belgium and took out four cars in that. And then Kimi Raikkonen in Suzuka, just giving him a little clip, big puncture, round he goes, out of the race. So it's very unlucky on Alonso, but I guess you got to say a well deserved champion, two champion drives. Or two drives of a champion from Sebastian in Abu Dhabi and Brazil. Because at the beginning of the season, I remember, well, at the beginning of the season and last season, everyone's saying that, oh, he, he can't overtake. The only reason he doesn't have to overtake is because he's always out in front in the faster car. And the only overtaking he has to do is around back markers who have to legally get out of his way. But he's proved in the last couple of races of last season that he is a proper driver, he can overtake, he can pick his spots, he doesn't have to crash into people, as he probably did in his younger years, I didn't watch F1 back then because I was still getting over the fact that Schumacher was winning everything, although that was a couple of years after he retired. Yeah, Great champion drive from Vettel, congratulations on the title, and I look forward to someone taking it off him next year because I don't think I could sit through another battle championship as long as it's not like 2011 if it's like 2011 then F1 is going to be perceived as boring scripted everyone knows the winner before the race whereas this year it was a nice surprise you know, seven different winners in the first seven races eight different winners overall with Kimi winning in Abu Dhabi it's it was a bit of a mixed up year, but as always, same person out on top. I kind of hope Sergio does well in the new McLaren with his new team. I'm not quite sure he'll take it to Jensen straight away. He might need a season or half a season to sort of get used to the car, although he has been in a very quick Salva this year. Obviously getting three podiums, two second places. And beating the Ferraris round uh, Monza, which is almost a no-no. Um, looking to see how... Looking forward to see how Lewis Hamilton gets on with Mercedes. Because that, at the beginning of the year, was a car that was always up there at the top. Hell, it even won a race in China. But then since then... It's just been slowly working backwards, down the grid, and down the position and times. As I'm not sure if they've just not developed the car, or everyone around them has developed so much that they're just overtaking them and Mercedes can't keep up. Um, what else am I looking forward to? Well, I suppose looking forward to Weber having another season trying to take it to Vettel and also Massa getting another year on his contract at Ferrari at the end of last season at the end of 2012 season he was looking very strong he was reversing that customary three tenths that he seemed happy with to be behind Alonso and was being ahead of him and there's also the blatant cheating by Ferrari in Austin just breaking the seal on his gear gearbox just enough so that he got a five place penalty and put Alonso on the clean side so he could have a better run off the line with the dirty left side of the grid as it was. 
So I'm looking forward to see how Massa gets on with the new Ferrari. Hopefully they can make a better car this year or next year. And then actually be able to take it to the top three. Well, I suppose they're second in the constructors. So the big two teams of uh, Red Bull and McLaren. Just p finished lap five and Maldonado comes screaming past me. And as with Australia, I found out that first corner you can always get straight back past them. And then just hold them behind them you for the rest of the lap. Normally until that back straight, just because the Marussia has no speed at all. So cutting ahead to the end of lap six. Just heading back onto the main straight. Perez now behind me. More than likely going to have DRS on me down the main straight. Yep, there he goes, round the inside. But leaving just enough room for me to cut back under him. Give him a little nudge. Wasn't probably fair enough. And another little nudge there. And then just trying to hold him off trying to get back past him. I guess that could be my first competitive overtake of this year, purely because he got past me for a couple of corners and I still managed to get the power down before him and stream past him again, although only just. Yeah, cutting ahead now to lap eight. It's coming round, I think that's turns five and six, I could be wrong. And Perez again, with Maldonado looking up the outside. Perez just scrape, uh, scraping by me on the inside of that corner. Managing to keep Maldonado at bay behind. Down into the hairpin. Thinking I could get him back, but just couldn't under brakes. I wasn't that brave. And this corner, my favourite corner of the track. And this bit from Maldonado. What the hell? You've got all that room on the inside of the track. I'm half over the kerb. You don't need to bump me off the track as well. You cheating Venezuelan rapist face. But now, after I run extremely wide, just managing to keep his teammate behind me, I get DRS down the main straight, and he doesn't. So let's see if I can pull him back, shall we? No, nope, not quite. But then, under braking, and turning the first corner, still can't can't quite get him, it's just too far ahead of me due to me completely messing up the braking in the last corner jumping ahead to lap 10 last corner again with Maldonado still up the road a little bit too much power just absolutely wheel spinning it and almost losing it Senna goes streaming up the inside followed up by, can't quite see where that is at the moment no, but then again, held him off, got past Senna back at the first corner as usual. And then just trying to keep him in my mirrors behind me. Jumping ahead to the end of lap 11. And again, locking up, running wide. And he decides to take a page out of his teammate's book. And he too tries to bump me off the road. But now again, just getting his toe down the main straight, the back straight, so I don't stay, or don't get too far behind him. Sort my braking out into this corner this time. Up his inside, and then just DRS it away from him. Is that two dots back? That's my teammate. My teammate is in 11th. And I've now in 10th, because Weber got past me down the straight, but only for a second. The old inside corner trick. Jump ahead to lap 13. Again, this corner was the bane of my life. I was either too fast that I kept skidding out wide, or too slow that I was just ruining the braking and losing too much time. And again, center passed me down the back straight. But Again, I get DRS and manage to sort my braking out. Almost. 
well, he dives into the pits because lap 12 and 13 was the AI pit lap. So I stay in eighth. And I got Maldonado coming past me again to lap 15. Not attempting to by the looks of it. Yep, there it goes. But under braking, this time I get it sorted. He's not that far ahead of me, I can get straight back past him. And accelerate away from him. And now, but to near the end of lap 15, just forces his way through, doesn't really care. Not really an overtaking point. Try and stay on his toe, try and get back past him. And this look, just turns in on me, gives me a little tap. Luckily I held it and stayed just enough behind him, hopefully for DRS. That looks like about half a second to me, so... Easy around the last corner. Yep, there goes the DRS. Let's try and catch him. I think he might be a bit too far ahead of me for this one. Yeah, he is. There's no way I can get it. Not enough top speed. Because obviously I'd get up for a wet race. And the game screwed me over. So that's now P9, which is really respectable for a Arusha. So now end of lap 16. And this is my pit stop lap. So let's dive into the pits. Let's see if we can make it quicker than last time. There's someone followed me into the pits. I can't quite see who it is. The only problem with Marusha is that their garage is right down the end. 3.9. It's better than last time, I think. But still not quite quick enough. So now, obviously everyone having pitted beforehand, I'm now back in a Marusha-esque position of 18th. With 11 laps left to go. Just trying to catch up to Grosjean. But with cold tyres, it's always going to end badly. I almost get him. He almost messes it. And just trying to dive down the inside of this corner. But again, he gives me a bump. Sends me round. Have to catch it. And from then on, I'm never going to catch him again. I'm trying to keep Karthi Khan behind me. I don't want him giving me a puncture with his front wing and here I'm still believing in the hope that I could maybe catch Grosjean but it's not happening and now obviously this is the time of the race where all the leaders decide to come through but somehow it's not the leader it's Karth Kain sod off so now maybe the blue person with the actual blue flag advantage will come past me eventually I have to really, really slow down because I think that's two flags I've gone past. And he's just nowhere near. There he goes. Alonso, I think, in his Ferrari. And he passed me before the DRS zone, so I was trying to be cheeky and get back past him. But obviously, Ferrari power with Kurz. It's going to be a Cosworth with no Kurz any day. Jump ahead to lap 19, and again, another blue flag. Grosjean stood in front of me, a little bit closer, and Karthi Kain still behind me. But now obviously I have to ruin my own race, and get out onto the marbles and the dirty part of the track, just to let someone through. Hamilton in his McLaren. Obviously with the blue flag bit, it works for the people in front of me, they have to slow down. So that's where I was hoping that maybe I could catch Grosjean, but as you can see, the gap went from 2.2 to 3.2 in a couple of laps. And there's Hulkenberg just starting to ram me out of the way, going into that corner, and lose a place again to Karthi Kain. Not 
exactly an overtaking place, that one. So I don't know what the AI was thinking, but it's just put me off completely. Ran wide onto the marbles. De La Rosa passed me as well. And from what was looking like a very respectable finishing place, I'm now down in 20th with eight laps left. But I think I do get DRS coming out of this. I do. So obviously, I'm going to try and get him down in turn one. Got my teammate behind me, just half a second. And hitting the limit way too far down the straight. I need more speed up there. So that's Delarosa dealt with. Should try and catch Carthy Kine now. Still in front of me on lap 21. So we just jumped to the end of the lap. There's another blue flag situation. It really annoys me that the AI isn't smart enough to speed up to go past you. You have to almost slow down to a crawl like I'm doing now. Just for him to pass me. And then i got to try and speed up so I don't get overtaken by the person that's actually fighting me for position. I wish that they could just... If I just move offline... They just bolt it, but no, you have to move on line and slow down to fucking crawl. So I jump ahead, lap 22. Hitting the limit of way too deep. And obviously trying to get back past him, completely mess up my braking. And it just ruins my race from there. Just let Glock and De La Rosa both pass me. Dirty tyres, six laps left, I'm outside of my objective now. That was just my eagerness on trying to catch the car that was ahead of me and just completely missing my braking point. Obviously I was fuming, but as I said in my beginning video, if I mess up, I mess up. I have to deal with it. If I crash, I crash. Again, I have to deal with it. So I'm not going to restart it just because I messed up one breaking point. And here again, trying to fight them. Fail epically, run wide. Still annoyed from turn one. And obviously now dirty tyres, I'm just sliding everywhere. Still down in P21 on lap 24. With De La Rosa six seconds in front of me and Petrov just steaming past me. Because obviously Caterhams have Kurs as well as DRS so they got more speed. But again, the old turn one trick. Just in the inside. Straight round him. Keep him there. Come up to the end of lap 24. And again, front runner. Hopefully they can make a quicker job of it this time because they'll have probably DRS and curves. But no, they decide to back out of it, so which means I have to go very slow, stay off the line, just to let them through. Compromising my own race and letting Petrov back in with a sniff. End the lap 25. Petrov still trying to have a look at me. gets past, but obviously we're heading it to my favourite place. See you later. Yeah, one of the Salvers is ahead of me. He's lapped me. I ain't catching him. You stupid engineer. It's actually my teammate in front of me on track. So, back straight, end of lap 26. Petrov having another look. And luckily... He crosses the DRS line before I do. So he now doesn't get DRS up this straight, but I do. So I can now pull away from him. 11 seconds out to my teammate. If anything, it's getting slower. Right, the gap's getting bigger. I'm somehow being slower. I don't believe that for a second. Yeah, if anyone's got any tips on how I can improve my driving to be a little bit faster or anything if you just put it down in the comments 
I'll read it and I'll give it a try in the next couple of races. So obviously with having been lapped, this is now my final lap. So was, all this was was just an effort to keep Petrov behind me and to finish side by side with my teammate. You see Fernando Alonso takes the checkered flag, I believe for the second race in a row. Just have to turn my fuel mix up to Ritz there. Just to give me some extra bit of speed and revs just to keep them behind me. He's having a look every which way, but it's just not going to happen, mate. But again, my least favourite corner. I think it's mostly because you already go around the corner and then you've got to break to go around an even tighter corner. But obviously with this game, you can't break and turn at the same time because you just lock up and go straight on. So you've got to sort of lift off the throttle and then just dab the brake a little bit. But if you don't dab it enough, you go straight on. If you dab it too much, you slow right down. And there we are, cross the line. Disappointing 21st. It could have been 18th. Or could have been 19th. And I would have made my objective. But it just wasn't to be. So, uh, finishing order. Obviously, Alonso 1. With the McLaren boys 2 and 3. Then Kimi, Schumacher, Kobayashi, Perez, Maldonado, Rosberg, Vettel, Senna, Verne, Ricardo, Weber, De Resta, Nico Hülkenberg, Romain Grosjean, Carthy Kain, De Rosa, Glock, Me, Petrov, and Kovalain, and somehow Massa being disqualified again. So, yep, Fernando's won two races in a row, followed up by Kimi, and Rosberg completes the top three. And I am holding 20th, just behind Paul de Resta, and two places ahead of my teammate, which is always good. And peak there at the bottom. Don't know how I'm in his car. But unfortunately, the heroics of the last race couldn't be duplicated, so now Marusha is right down in 11th. Whereas before we were ahead of the McLarens. So obviously, disappointed in the garage. And look at that name on the back. My name's not Charles. An engineer telling someone else in the garage to block the camera. Don't want to see me cry. I'm a man, for after all. Men don't cry. So obviously, Stefano Domenicali, thinking that Fernando Alonso is the star because he's finished two races in first. And then the old clipping of Glock passing me, or crossing the line ahead of me. Lucky bastard. But I beat you in Australia, so it's all right. And apparently, the Marusa team has got the best out of the tyres. And we've got over our tyre wear top problems. I don't believe that. But then again, my tyres have never really gone off. So, obviously, still on for my season objective. And next race in China. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Bye.